Fox 8 Sports. This is the Black and Gold Review Show, sponsored by your Southern Quality Ford dealers, home of the best-selling truck 41 years straight, and the 2018 Nissan Titan, backed by America's best limited truck warranty. We've got that stinging feeling this morning as we welcome you into the Black and Gold Review Show following a Saints loss. We've got a couple of Hall of Famers here with us, Saints Hall of Famer Deuce McAllister, as well as Hall of Fame Instagram photographer. Who knew? That's right. Who knew? Hagen Chris Hagen. TV on Instagram will follow. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. There's nothing wrong with that. It's been a while since we had this kind of day where we're coming back into this show talking about a loss. Yeah, it has been. And, uh, you know, Hopefully it makes those guys have to refocus a little bit. Not to say that they were not playing up to capabilities, but, you know, just a few too many mistakes against a team that was playing desperate, a team that had to, to win. And, you know, it's just, hey, look, let's, let's go and regroup. Feels a little bit like the law of averages. I guess what goes up must come down. Yeah. And not to say that it always has to happen like that, but I think like we saw with the Rams when they paid a visit to the Saints, when you're that good, you've kind of gotten that target on your back. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened to the Saints. They went into Dallas with the target on their back as the NFL's clear best the way they've been playing, and they got punched in the mouth. You're right. All right, a lot to get to on this show tonight. Let's get right to the playbook. Our first play being... Beaten, battered, and bruised. This Dallas defense, they backed up a lot of the talk they had leading up to the game. They were able to be physical. They were able to get after the quarterback. And any time that you can disrupt the timing of this offense, then it gives you a problem. And I think that the Saints just didn't have enough uh, continuity or, or at least rhythm to be able to get going. And it just showed up in a, you know, a, a, an uncharacteristic flaw for that offense because they are rhythm and timing. And I think that doesn't necessarily just refer to in the trenches where that offensive line got pushed back a little bit, but on the outside as well on some of those receivers and not being able to get separation and getting bullied a little bit. We saw a lot of guys taking off their routes, a lot of guys not able to, to get away from the defense, and um, it, it caught up with the Saints. Maybe the first time we've seen Jamon Bushrod struggle in replace of Teron Armstead? Yeah, and I think so. It was just, I don't know if it was necessarily a struggle, but I think that, you know, feel rushed. And yeah. I think a lot of that maybe goes back to not being able to run the football because they were having to just pass. I mean, anytime you have to pass it uh, for X amount of plays, those defenders know that they can just get after the quarterback. It felt like the Saints stood no chance in third and long situation and maybe even some of those shorter third downs just because of the way that um, the short passing game was even disrupted so much. All right, play number two. Peyton under the spotlight. Challenge calls early, hurt the team late. The fourth down call, Kamara stuffed. I don't have a problem with the fourth down call. Guess what he's done all year long, and it's worked. And the one time it doesn't work, people are complaining. But the challenge calls were questionable. I think when you look at the challenge call, though, the only one that I, I probably didn't agree with was the uh, Dan Arnold catch. I mean, because if it was an incomplete, you still in field goal range. Uh, from, from my point of view, obviously, you, you had... Um, gotten the, the recovery so that was going to be you know okay you pick up a plus 15 yarder uh and and you're you're going in to score but the one that you i i guess it was just inconclusive evidence this one on the mike thomas catch yeah. i thought he did catch it did but you can't tell cleanly if that ball did hit the ground and so uh it was away from the bench where sean payton was so he didn't get a good look he was trusting mike to say hey look i caught it and uh any any player is going to say yeah i made the play but it just came back to bite you late in the second half. I think it's just, it, it fit with what the Saints have done all season. They've been that aggressor. They've been the team that wants to go out and score early and score first. And um, especially in that situation, I think Sean was just desperate for points and he wanted those yards and he felt like, you know, this could lead to a touchdown if I get the ball inside the 10 yard line, which he did. It's, it's hard to predict when you're going to need those challenges later. And obviously the Saints put an emphasis on wanting to get up early and control the game and kind of do what Dallas did to them and force Dallas into those uh, passing situations to put the game on Dak Prescott. It just didn't work out that way. Deuce, let me ask you as a player, former player, how does the coach balance listening to what his player says, as in Mike Thomas proclaiming, I caught that ball, versus what the video is showing and knowing there's really nothing conclusive that can overturn the call, whether you called it or not? Well, I think you're going to lean on the guys upstairs. That's where he leans on the guys upstairs to see, uh, you know, what are they seeing as well. I mean, because from his viewpoint, he did not get a clean look just because it was on the other side of the field, and that being Michael Thomas in that throw and catch. And the video, uh, when you're away, they're not going to give you a lot of video no. pre um, you throwing the challenge flag down. And so he's just got to depend on the guys upstairs to say, yes, coach, it's a good challenge. Number three in the playbook, 
undrafted and unreliable. One week we're pra praising Chris this undrafted uh, free agent class of receivers catching touchdowns from Drew Brees, and the next week we're we're, we're kind of criticizing them because they showed their lack of experience in the game where they really need to be stepped up better. That's what we saw. We saw Traquan Smith never able to get going. Keith Kirkwood with a couple of drops before the touchdown pass. Um, Dan Arnold not as effective. And the Cowboys really keying in and trying to, to take away Michael Thomas and make those other guys beat him. I think weeks like, you know, Atlanta where you're throwing touchdown passes to a lot of different guys, those are a, a bit of outliers, and it's, it's hard to make a living – in that type of environment with some guys that are inexperienced, I think clearly uh, that's what caught up to them, and um, you just hate to see it in, in such a big game. I think they're still good players. I think that they see some of the adjustments that teams are going to make, and you know, a lot of teams have not had success kind of mm -hmm. playing that physical style with mm -hmm. them, and it's really adjusting to what the referees are allowing them to do. Um, some, some crews are not going to let them get as handsy as maybe this crew did, but you have to be able to adjust your game, and so we'll see if they can bounce back. But yeah, it was something that, hey, look, you knew some teams and you started to see it. Teams were going to take Michael Thomas away. Yeah. Who steps up? All right, play number four in the book. Front sevens, seven sacks. Onyemata with three, Cam Jordan two, A.J. Klein, Taylor Stallworth. Each had one sack apiece. You cannot complain about what this front four did last night. No, nah, it's hard to complain about what they were able to do. I mean, they were able to get pressure. The only thing you're going to go back and say, man, if we could have tackled the quarterback a little bit cleaner, if we could have tackled him when he broke contain or the mm -hmm. pocket, that, that that's where the fuss comes in. Or, you know, you look at it on the back end. I, I've got to stay with the play or I can't grab in this certain situation. But I thought that they had him not flustered, but maybe running a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, you come up with seven sacks, man, it's, uh, you, you, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, when you look at Dak Prescott's numbers, 24 of 28, he was getting a lot of those balls out pretty quick, trying to work underneath to Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup and a couple to Zeke. But anytime it seemed like there, it was more than a three-step drop, they were getting there and they were getting that pressure. Anytime Dak Prescott had to get off of his first read, they were there in his face, and it made a big difference, um, even forcing a turnover late. I mean, I said it. When Cam Jordan forces that fumble and the Saints recover, that's all you could ask for. Given the way that, it gave, yeah. that game had gone, to have the ball with about two minutes and 30 seconds left and Drew Brees, that's all you could ask for. So I think that front seven at least did, did a pretty good job, and not to mention what they did against the run as well. They certainly helped the offense out by giving them extra possessions with the turnovers. They just didn't do much with it. Play number five. Time for a reset. We think back to 2009. They lost to the Cowboys in that game and then lost the last week but won the Super Bowl. Is it time to kind of maybe kind of check yourself a little bit? And this is what this game does, this loss. Well, it definitely checks yourself because it makes you go back to the fundamentals. It makes you say, hey, look, I know I can clean up what I'm doing and make sure that I'm doing it the right way just because you didn't have success in your last game. So whether it's a reset or you just getting back to the basics, this is an opportunity for them to do it. It also doesn't hurt that, you know, you have this little mini bye week. You've got a little extended rest time before you're back on the field taking on Tampa Bay. So it is a good time to reset. Um, it's time to, I guess, look yourself in the mirror and say, okay, there's some areas, like Deuce said, we need to get better. Maybe we need to get tougher and, um, you know, break that down going forward because uh, if you're looking at the bigger picture and what the Rams have ahead of them and what the Saints have ahead of them, um, I think going up against Carolina, especially with that game on the road, they're going to have some more physical matchups in their future. A lot to play for still. All right, coming up, we know you're upset about the referees. We'll provide some clarity and weigh in on some pivotal decisions. Plus, what to do with a pair of veteran signings, Kurt Coleman and Brandon Marshall. We'll answer your questions, and there are a bunch of them. That's coming up next.